Arriving at the event, my first impressions were pretty good. I was one of the first ones to arrive, so I didn't even have to wait in line to get my badge. Got my badge, got my coffee, had a walk around. Organization was superb. Why did others want to attend and what were their key takeaways? Let's check them out. Um, so I am building a B2B SaaS company. So for me, having all of this sort of knowledge and connections all in one place is incredibly valuable. I've been to two other SASters, so I know it's a great community. Uh, and we've actually just rolled out a new sales methodology, so there's not a better opportunity to work with uh, SaaS companies and leaders and, and try to help them scale and grow. I've been uh, kind of consuming a lot of the SaaS content, uh, both the stateside ones for annual as well as Europa uh, virtual for a few years now. Well, the reason I attended SaaS in the first place was I followed Jason Lemkin. I attended a lot of his online um, uh, webinars uh, that they do every Wednesday and some of the topics were of great interest to me. So as a, as a, as a founder and a startup, uh, I felt that this would be a place to come to. I wanted to attend Saster to network, get to know people in the SaaS world, um, and it's my first event and it's been really great. So I came across Saster through Jason's content on Twitter. So I'm a huge fan of the stuff that he puts out there. Um, as I'm personally growing my career in the SaaS industry, I found it really easy to consume information. So that brought me to the event today. And uh, yeah, it really reflects the stuff that he puts out there, so it's been great. I think it's a combination of two things. First is the, the startups and the founders who, who are here, and then secondly, the content, which is, which is really good. I'd say definitely the networking opportunities at the end, um, where you build those relationships has been probably the most important part for us. It's very helpful to expose myself to smart people that are not um, uh, willing to accept the status quo and present them my ideas and get challenged by these people. And that's what happens here with a lot of bright people, a lot of uh, constructive non-conformists. I'm building a sales uh, product myself, so of course I wanted to connect with other uh, sales and marketing leaders and uh, pitch my product, but also learn from uh, others as well. I heard a lot of such things about uh, how amazing this conference is, and that inspired me that let me have a look at Europe first and then think of the US one. The, the combination of real heavyweights who know what they're doing talking about who are here sharing like their key lessons and takeaways from personal experiences they have had in the industry whether that's on the investor side or the, or the building side of things obviously really great you end up with some things that really kind of stick in your mind so for example um, last year for me that was about building a team and how much equity you would give to different people joining at different parts in the journey and it seems like a really silly thing but it's, it's not something that's spoken about a lot so uncovering those things um, but also the people that you meet, everyone is building in this space. Everyone has big ambitions and at different scales. So everyone has either got advice or case studies or something to offer that's relevant to you. Most SaaS companies still are in way too reactive mode. And so they've tried to cut their way to growth and they've realized that's not working. They have competition creeping in from all sides. And so basically what you see is people trying to find a resettling of how do they go more proactively out and find the right kind of business? And then how do they actually get their go-to-market teams to work all the way through the process to build high quality business and not just transactional business? Session on digital CS and how we can scale a CS strategy across the B2B SaaS business, which is uh, hugely applicable to what, what I do at Probable Max, which is awesome. Everyone is very um, open to ch ch like talking to you, sharing what they do, listening to what you do, and also following up later and staying in touch. Goes. For me, it's the uh, reoccurring theme of AI. So um, we use it in our organization, it's in our products, but for me, it's uh, when you go through a number of different talks and it's just constant. And I think it's just re, uh, re emphasized for me how groundbreaking it is right now and how much it's going to change our industry. So it's, it's making me think a bit harder about how we can utilize it at our company and also how it's going to impact our customers. What was very interesting is about the product led growth versus sales led growth, the combination of both. So there were some like really cool, cool informative sessions and um, the one also on product market fit by Octopus uh, Ventures, that was, that was also really nice. Today, today has been a bit more AI driven, so I've enjoyed that, but turns out they've got it all today anyway, so. That sales is changing a lot. Um, so AI has been, uh, has been a big, big change uh, in sales and marketing. And um, yeah, we need to be aware of that and we need to adapt our uh, sales motions. You need to think of the holistic uh, 
uh, strategy to, you know, run the Prague like growth. But the real treat at the end of the event was that Jason Dumkin himself hosted a Q&A session where you could ask him anything and he would give his two cents on the topic. And at the end of that session, you could catch him for a short conversation at happy hours where you can just get his two cents on whatever was on your mind. He was totally down to earth and helpful despite being exhausted by the end of the event. So that was a real cherry on top.